Hello everyone, uh, I'm Kwang Jun An, a first year graduate student at MIT. And today I'm going to talk about my work on Riemannian acceleration. Uh, this is a joint work with, with my advisor, Professor Subhistra. Okay, so let me explain the terms in the title. First, Riemannian optimization is an optimization problem where the cost function's domain is in Riemannian manifold. For those who are not familiar with uh, the concept of Riemannian manifold, you can just think of it as optimization over curved spaces. So spaces could be you know, sphere, saddle, or torus, or more abstractly, space of matrices, matrix manifold. Turns out there are many benefits. Uh, in particular, even classical problems in machine learning can be reformulated as Riemannian optimization. And there are other benefits as well, uh, apart from making it to, into unconstrained optimization. Uh, turns out previous work have shown uh, one can come up with faster methods and simpler analysis uh, based on the ideas from Riemannian optimization. Turns out Riemannian optimization is also relevant uh, for theory, theoretical question. For this, please uh, refer to this uh, recent paper. So uh, let me uh, briefly go over acceleration for those who never seen accelerate gradient method before. It's due to Yuri Nesterov uh, during 80s. He basically modified the uh, conventional gradient descent by adding some interpolation steps like this. Turns out this interpolation step gives us uh, acceleration. So for mu strongly convex and L smooth cost function, turns out we can show this um, accelerate convergence guarantee. So for epsilon approximate solution, you only need uh, the square root of what's required for gradient descent. So this is indeed an uh, acceleration result. And uh, it turns out for this class of function, this is actually optimal uh, rate you can achieve. So then, uh, then the natural question is whether we can develop such landmark acceleration result for curved spaces like Riemannian manifolds. Turns out to be a challenging question and uh, previous works were only able to answer it partially. To, to begin with, Leo et al. Uh, reduces the task, task to uh, solving nonlinear equations, but it's not clear whether their uh, proposed equations are even feasible or tractable. Uh, next, Elimisis et al. Uh, took a continuous dynamics approach, and it's not clear whether their, the discretization of their dynamics yields acceleration. The most concrete result was made in uh, the same conference by Zhang and Sra, and they proposed an algorithm which is guaranteed to accelerate locally near the global optimum, and the global acceleration remain open problem. So what's the challenge? Uh, it turns out um, Nesterov's uh, original, um, original analysis for the Euclidean case called estimate sequence technique heavily relies on linear vector space structure of the Euclidean, Euclidean space. So it's not clear whether we can generalize this technique to nonlinear space like Riemannian manifolds. And um, it's it, it, in general hard to understand Nesterov's uh, proof technique and its scope has puzzled researchers for many years. So uh, it's now uh, clear whether his uh, an analytic scope uh, covers Riemannian manifold case as well. So uh, to overcome our approach, we first simplified Nesterov's analysis. And based on this simple alternative, we generalize it to Riemannian manifold case and come up with the first globally accelerated Riemannian accelerated algorithm. Okay, so let me begin with uh, the first part, simplification part. Uh, our analysis is based on potential function analysis. So roughly speaking, it relies on the two following, following two steps. Firstly, we choose a potential function. And if we can show that this potential function decreases over iterations, one, uh, it follows that um, uh, the following convergence rate, which is a product of one minus C. So this is linear convergence rate. Okay, so um, it turns out uh, we, one can um, come up with uh, for, uh, following straightforward calculations and using convexity, one can come up with the following upper bound, quadratic upper bound on the potential difference. So we only need to ensure that um, this quadratic upper bound is non-positive. And for that, we took a naive strategy where we choose the uh, cross terms equal to zero. And 
uh, this coefficients of the norm squared term non-positive. Note that these coefficients are uh, some functions of parameters alpha, beta, gamma, and uh, potential function um, coefficients C and D. It turns out this naive uh, strategy works perfectly and completely determines uh, all the parameters. So in particular, um, it determines uh, C uh, as per this uh, nonlinear recursive relation. And based on this C t plus one, one can um, completely determine other parameters alpha, beta, gamma, and B. And for details, please see our paper. So based on this, we get this following main theorem. So given uh, initial C, we choose the next uh, C for the next iteration based off this uh, nonlinear recursive relation. And then we have, uh, and then choose the parameters accordingly. We get this uh, linear convergence rate uh, that's product of one minus C's. Notably, this uh, complicated um, parameter choice exactly matches that of Nesterov, um, that from the Nesterov's textbook. So main takeaway is that uh, Nesterov's estimate sequence technique, which is hard to understand, is basically choosing parameters according to this knife strategy. So uh, the remaining part is uh, to identify the convergence rate. We only need to investigate how C evolves. So uh, uh, to that end, we need to study the, uh, the uh, nonlinear equation appeared in the previous slide. So for that, let's draw um, the characteristic functions of the nonlinear equation. Then the intersection the, of the two curves is the square root. And um, so basically starting with this uh, initial point, one can um, characterize the evolution of C's as just uh, convergence to the fixed point. So, uh, and it turns out with careful analysis, one can show the convergence is geometric. So, Based on this uh, fixed point analysis, we get this following corollary uh, um, for fixed uh, um, initial point C zero, uh, we get this um, uh, accelerate convergence rate. So we recover Nesterov's somewhat complicated analysis based on a very uh, naive strategy. So main takeaway from this fixed point analysis is that we can um, study this nonlinear um, recursive relation based on very simple fixed point um, uh, convergence analogy. Okay, so far we have uh, come up with a simple alternative to Nesterov's estimate sequence. Now we generalize this to Riemannian case and come up with the first globally accelerated gra uh, gradient method for Riemannian manifold. So um, Actually, using the exponential map operation on the manifold, one can write the uh, analog of a uh, a uh, accelerate gradient method for a Riemannian case. So, for those who are not familiar with exponential map, what it does is at each step, it uh, computes the vector on the tangent space of the point and maps it back to the manifold using the exponential map. So uh, we can also carry out the potential function analysis. So it turns out um, for the distance part, uh, you might be tempted to use uh, Riemannian distance over the manifold, but it turns out it's not the uh, right choice. Uh, we choose this um, projected distance, which we denote by this distance, and this choice is crucial for our analysis. So, uh, but the challenge here is that uh, since it's nonlinear um, metric space, the metric varies across points. So there's a distortion um, in metric uh, between the two, across the two different points. So we need to control the metric, dis uh, so-called metric distortion to be able to carry out a potential function analysis. So to make it formal, we define this uh, distortion rate we call uh, delta t plus one is a valid distortion rate. If it satisfies this inequality, turns out this exactly captures what we need. And we can carry out a uh, potential function analysis uh, assuming the existence of a valid distortion rate. Then the theorem um, it reads as follows. It just uh, exactly matches the Euclidean case uh, modulo the appearance of vulnerable delta uh, t plus one in the recursive relation. Then we get the same uh, convergence rate. 
So the remaining question is um, to see how this appearance of delta in the nonlinear equation affect the convergence rate. And second question is how we can estimate such deltas. So let's answer the first question first. Um, so for illustration, let's say um, the distortion rate is just fixed um, constant delta over iterations. Then basically the characteristic function will be shifted downward, the uh, 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 brown one. So um, the fixed point will be shifted more toward the non-accelerated um, rate as the distortion gets severer. In other words, um, the severer the distortion gets, slower the convergence uh, rate becomes. And no matter how severe the distortion is, the Riemannian accelerate uh, method is always faster than just uh, non-accelerated gradient descent. And in order to achieve the uh, accelerated rate, full acceleration, we need to bring the distortion rate down to one. Okay, so this uh, completely answers the first question. And the remaining question is the second question uh, about how we can control and estimate the distortion. So from the textbook result of Riemannian geometry, there's a large, large comparison theorem, which gives us this uh, following um, valid distortion rate, but it depends on something we cannot compute, uh, the algorithm cannot compute. So we had to come up with a new metric distortion inequality, which gives us, which characterizes the valid distortion rate in terms of a completely computable term. So which means the algorithm can just estimate the valid distortion rate based off the distances between the previous iterations. So we can estimate a valid distortion rate on, on the fly. It turns out we, uh, with some careful analysis, one can show that this particular choice of valid distortion rate quickly converges to one, which means uh, by the previous slide, uh, the ex uh, algorithm will achieve the full acceleration. So our main theorem of the paper reads as follows. This is the um, nonlinear equation appeared in the previous slide. And we just choose this uh, particular computable, completely computable valid distortion rate then we get this uh, linear fast convergence rate with, where each iteration is strictly faster than uh, non-accelerated gradient descent. And it quickly converges to the square root, which means it quickly achieves full acceleration. So let me conclude this um, with some remarks. Uh, we developed the first globally accelerated optimization method for remaining manifolds. Our proof technique for the Euclidean case notably offers a simple alternative approach to SMS sequence, which actually indeed uh, has puzzled researchers um, as to the scope of the uh, analysis, analytical technique. And we really hope that our work in initiate uh, the study of um, um, the remaining optimization and bring our uh, knowledge at, at, at par with Euclidean optimization. Thank you for listening.